Here in Finland, and I would wager a lot of other places, consumer prices are not are are growing faster than wages are actually growing. And we actually have people in Congress, right wingers, of course, NCP, uh, Finns party, people who don't care. Again, they don't care about the working class, and I don't understand. Well, I do understand because humans love shitting in their own mouths and just becoming inured to the taste. Um, why they keep electing these fucking people who just want more jobs, more jobs, jobs look good, jobs, jobbies, here's another job, let's go to the job store where they sell jobbies and grow jobbies on trees or whatever Charlie Day said, um, let's just throw a bunch of jobs out there, get people to work, make them even more miserable, and then take more of their wages away, and that will save six billion euros for the economy. We could, you know, just take a shortcut and start taxing the, the super wealthy their fair share, you know? We could do that, but we're not gonna do that. We could give people a universal basic income, which could be easily paid for with those taxes, easily. At least, you know, from the billionaires who don't fuck off for other tax havens. I mean, countries, because they're selfish and they just want more for themselves. Um, but we're not going to do that because we either can't or because we just don't have the balls. That's essentially what I think it comes down to. I don't care what roadblocks they say are in the way of creating a universal basic income for people. They're, it, they're fucking imaginary. They're imaginary and entirely contingent upon the selfishness of the people who have all of the money and the spinelessness of the people who have all of the power in government. But... A hundred thousand jobs will make everything better, even though wages are not keeping up with inflation. And we wonder why 20% of people are just staying home and collecting their unemployment benefit that we want to cut so people will go and get full-time work so they can be full-time miserable. You don't make working life any better for the working class and you wonder why they're staying at home? and you berate them for it, you insult them for it, go fuck yourselves. Finns party, NCP, Christian Democrats, Swedish People's Party, eh, you, know, you know, fuck you two. You know, I, the onus is always on the, on the shoulder of the people who are doing all of the work already. And it's like, give us a fucking break, you know? Give them a fucking break. How much longer do you think they can continue propping up your fucking economy before you start making somebody else tag in? A hundred thousand jobs is gonna do it, huh? A hundred thousand jobs, and, and, and that, that'll mean that nobody has to claim any unemployment benefits. Because we're gonna pay them, right? We're gonna pay them a salary that completely negates any notions of going to the unemployment office or, or going to Kella and collecting a housing subsidy or any kind of subsidy whatsoever because we're gonna pay them, right? No, we're not gonna fucking pay them because, might I restate, wages have not risen to stay in lockstep with inflation. And as long as people are finding it more enticing to just sit at home, which I do not fucking blame them for, then go and work a job with a weakening, with a with, with a weakening union, with increasingly shittier benefits, longer hours, being tasked with more things, and being told to take more initiative for for nothing. You know, mental health issues that politicians are like, oh, we need to focus on these things, and you don't realize that a lot of these mental health issues and and the, these stressors that people encounter happen at fucking work. Because they're overworked. They have to work and work and work and work. But wa wanting a universal basic income, that's lazy. That's talk for lazy people. Sisu. Pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and all that stuff. That, that's, that's lazy talk. I don't think so. I don't think you necessarily have to be a lazy person just because you want a basic amount of money that will be able to sustain your life, you know, things like these luxuries like food, <laughs> these luxuries like a roof over your head, these things that are getting more and more expensive, while, again, people's wages just stay there. They just stay there.
it's not about laziness. You know, the, the anti-work movement, the universal basic income movement, the automation movement, it's not about wanting human beings to do nothing. It's not that we would do nothing with all of our free time. We could put that free time towards something good and decent for society, something a hell of a lot more noble than some bullshit job that's staffed by middle management and taskmasters whose only job is to create more tasks to keep you busy, tasks that could easily be done and, and be done a lot more cheaply by a robot or some sort of automated system. You know, the future is now, folks, not just with AI, but with, 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 with all sorts of automation. And the only reason it's not implemented more than it is is because people want people to go to work, to have bullshit jobs, to do tasks, that a robot could do much more efficiently, much more cheaply, and probably a lot better. But there is this insane obsession from the right wing to just put people to work and think that that's going to solve everything when you ignore the fact that there's a reason people are staying home and just, just collecting from the government. And you cannot blame them. You, you can try, I guess, if you're one of these people who thinks that, that no matter what the work is, it's noble and it's virtuous. You know, work wasn't always seen as virtuous in, in human history. It wasn't always seen as a virtue, but then Puritans came along and just, you know. And we're, the, we're, we're supposedly in the 21st century and we're still thinking like Puritans and we're still electing assholes who think like Puritans. Ugh. I feel like I'm just kind of... At least I have a point for the video, but... The, Anti-work is not laziness. That time could be spent doing things like bolstering the arts. Something else right-wing, like unenlightened, dipshit right-wingers want to take away from us. They want to defund the arts. People would have more time to spend on literature, on, on artwork, on, on digital media, like everything. People could volunteer their time to do things to strengthen their communities. And build networks of communities that look out for one another and make sure that everyone has everything that they need. I know I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a, a pipe dream here, but it's a pipe dream that could be achieved if we had governments and people in charge with power and with money that were a little less selfish and a lot less spineless. And if we were to just dispel this notion that working yourself to the bone for work's sake is virtuous... We could get to a point like that. We could have a universal basic income. If a universal basic income is going to happen anywhere, it's probably going to be in Europe. Somewhere in Europe. As, 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 well, once we get all these right-wingers to fuck off, you know, maybe. But it will happen eventually in some country in Europe. And it could be paid for so many times over with the money that billionaires who sit on their lazy asses and just watch it collect. With that money, it could be paid for, you know? talking about hard work you want to talk about hard work and you, and you want to think you think that billionaires you think elon musk worked hard to get where he fucking is give me a break give me a break you can keep entertaining that notion if it makes you feel better about your billionaire worship um you're never going to be that billionaire and you shouldn't ever be that billionaire because if you have everything you need in life, plus a little extra, you don't need a billion dollars or a billion euros. You don't even need a... I don't know. What what euro amount would you put on safety and stability for the entirety of your life? Meaning you got food on your plate. You've got a few luxuries here and there. You got a roof over your heads. Your kids got education. You got health care. These things for every single person on this planet can be paid for. They can be paid for, but we just don't want to because we're human beings and we like to shit in our own mouths and our government says, love the taste. And our leaders say, love the taste. And billionaires say, love the taste and buy my product. We are really an unimpressive lot. And whatever comes after us humans, they're going to look back at us they're, they're, they're going to look at what we did and go, oh, how cute. You flew rockets to the moon. And oh, how cute. You almost cured cancer. And you almost did all of these things, which you probably could have done if you had better funded systems. I'm not just talking about systems that allow people to sit on their asses. I'm talking about systems that put money into places where they need it the most, like research and development for not just vaccines, but all sorts of of of, of all different branches of medicine. 
research into, you know, you know we, we could have more research for things like, I don't know, what, what about sociology even? You know, so we could better understand the needs of, of, of people as a group and as individuals. We, we could have better understandings of things. But people don't want better, deeper understandings of things. They just want the, the short-term payoff. Which kind of makes sense because we're only here for a very limited time. If we're lucky, maybe a hundred years. Why do we need to care about what comes after that? We'll just wait for everything to hit the fan. All the shit to hit the fan and go, Oh, we need to fix that. Because we're humans. Because we like to shit in our own mouths. <sighs> it doesn't mean that I'm completely hopeless for the future. I'm not. It may seem that, like that, like I'm just this this big bundle of negative energy and I think that everything is just doom and gloom. No. I think that if things do get to that tipping point, things will have no choice but to work out. Because if they don't, we're all fucked. And I'm talking about things on a macro level like climate change. When we have cities literally starting to sink and flood... Oh, wait, we've already got that. <laughs> Oops. But when we've got that happening on a more catastrophic level, when we've got wildfires that burn for seven straight years or ten straight years or whatever, when we've got hurricanes the size of Alaska, you know, maybe, maybe we'll have absolutely no choice but to go, okay, things are really bad. Let's start pooling our money into fixing things. But maybe by then it'll be too late. Maybe I am just full of doom and gloom. But could you blame me? Could you really blame me? You know how hard it is to stay positive about the state of this world when you're a part of a species that, again, likes to just shit in their own mouths because they don't want solutions for long-term issues. They want short-term solutions for short-term issues and they pretend, or politicians pretend, that these things will work out in the long term. Ignoring, of course, that humans have short-term memories, willfully have short-term memories, and they like to shit in their own mouths. Have a good day, folks.